Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about AMD versus Nvidia and Intel. Don't discount Team Blue because they might just surprise you in the next few years. Though at the moment, obviously the competition in the GPU sphere is between AMD and Nvidia. But I think competition is putting it a bit too generously between AMD and Nvidia because I think Nvidia is so far ahead in certain areas that really they blow AMD out of the water. That's not to say that AMD doesn't have its own advantages, because they absolutely do. And let's talk about those advantages so you know where they stand, what they have on offer, and of course what Nvidia has on offer over here in the GPU wars. One particular advantage that AMD does have at the moment is with regards to frame generation and with regards to upscaling in certain ways. In terms of visual quality, the consensus seems to be that NVIDIA with DLSS, with DLAA, which is the best anti-aliasing method for gaming at the moment, NVIDIA has an advantage. And with frame generation in terms of pure visual quality, NVIDIA is ahead. But in terms of availability, in terms of the number of GPUs that can use it, AMD may be ahead. Though there is, interestingly enough, a application available that does give you frame generation with a lot more games maybe not as good though as what AMD has on offer still at the moment with FSR the latest version of FSR in terms of us scaling they may not have the same quality image quality as Nvidia though it can be hard to tell so let's just be clear on this like actually being able to tell which actually looks better can be difficult in terms of anti-aliasing the LSS does seem to be superior and yes you can tell with that but in terms of availability and performance, the latest version of FSR seems to be better based on all the benchmarks that I've seen. Of course, how many games are actually going to use that version of FSR? That is a discussion. And when you're using something like FSR or you're using something like the LSS, you might be interested in, yeah, you want the performance, but you also want the image quality to be pretty good. But fairly substantial advantage is with fluid motion frames that AMD provides. Because this is frame generation for a lot of games, not just games that have it built in inherently. Now, for the record, there are other methods and people have been able to make NVIDIA mods that have frame generation. But if it's not built in, frame generation can cause a lot of issues. In fact, even in games that have it natively, frame generation is sometimes not great. Sometimes it runs well if it's implemented properly. Cyberpunk, as an example, or Witcher Free, uh, the latest version of Witcher Free. But in games where it's not implemented properly or you're using it out of the game or you're using software that adds it to a game, it may not be perfect. However, even though there's mods for NVIDIA, even though there's programs that can do it, the fact that AMD is providing frame generation for games with fluid motion frames is a pretty big deal. How much will it matter? It's kind of hard to say. If you already own a GPU, this is a significant advantage to you, undeniably so. If you are looking to buy a new GPU, then that's obviously a different discussion. I would say this is more useful for older generations of hardware than newer ones, because newer ones for older games, for the most part, will run fairly well. There are some exceptions, but very, very few of them, and chances are there's probably some mod out there already, like for Starfield, as an example, probably some mod that adds it. But just keep that aspect in mind. That it can be modded, but just ease of use, and it is certainly an advantage. So performance-wise, availability, AMD wins in terms of upscaling versus NVIDIA. That is a point in their favor, not necessarily in terms of image quality, but I think AMD and NVIDIA do have different priorities with regards to this kind of technology, specifically consoles versus NVIDIA Shield. However, we do move on to NVIDIA's significant advantage versus AMD. Though, interestingly enough, this advantage is not necessarily driven by what NVIDIA wants to do for desktop users. It's rather what they want to do with the NVIDIA Shield. So what Linus Tech Tips and others have stated is that the whole purpose of the NVIDIA app and the benefits that it does provide substantial benefits, undeniably. So they're coming from the perspective of waiting for Nintendo to release their, a new console, and then they're going to release a new NVIDIA Shield, and then, and then the NVIDIA app will be fully released. But even as it is, and even with those caveats, it is a significant benefit. 
And I'm not talking here about like, oh, you can optimize your games. That is not really the benefit over here. The significant benefit with the NVIDIA app is RTX HDR and RTX Dynamic Vibrance, if you care about that. Personally, I don't care much about Dynamic Vibrance. I prefer to set that manually because NVIDIA does have game filters and you can set your Vibrance level however you want. You can use Game Filter, but you can certainly use Vibrance in a lot more games than the game filters work. Just keep that aspect in mind. Uh, so you might have it more widely available. But RTX HDR, this thing is a game changer. It is HDR, it is basically like Windows Auto HDR, but it's available in every single game. I'm not exaggerating on this. Absolutely every single game that you play on your computer and you have the NVIDIA app supports RTX HDR. How good is it? Well, let me put it like this. People have done testing comparing RTX HDR com to, say, Cyberpunk HDR. Cyberpunk HDR is pretty good. Most games that have HDR don't have good HDR. Like, the settings are not great, or they're using desktop settings. It doesn't look good. Like, in the vast majority of games I've played that have had HDR, it wasn't implemented well. So... RTX HDR, even compared to something like Cyberpunk, which does have good HDR implementation, it is able to stand on its own. There might be some benefits with Cyberpunk, but people that are more knowledgeable about the technology, they did testing, screen testing, all that, seeing the blacks, the whites, all that, the brightness levels, and they found that the actual quality of a RTX HDR could be better in certain situations, especially with the blacks, uh, than Cyberpunk's HDR. Pretty significant point, because again, you might not want to use RTX HDR for Cyberpunk, but you would want to use it for the vast majority of games that either have no HDR or have a really bad implementation of it. Very substantial benefit over here with it, the availability. And it's not like Game Filter. If you have an NVIDIA GPU and you use Game Filter, you know there's tons of games which don't work with it. This works in every single game that I have played. Absolutely every single one of them. Like Age of Mythology Retold, it works. Uh, Black Myth Wukong, Star Wars Outlaws, Jedi Survivor, so on and so forth. I mean, there's game, like Star Wars Outlaws, for instance, doesn't have, doesn't work with Game Filter. Um, as an example, Age of Mythology Retold, the Game Filter don't work there. But RTX HDR does work. One major downside at the moment, and it is a fairly substantial one, though this is not the limitation of technology, it's just like NVIDIA being lazy with updating the app at the moment, because, yeah, beta. But one significant disadvantage in this is that it only works on one single monitor. So if you have two monitors, you know, you have a second monitor that you're doing various things on, it, the technology will not work. You can only make it work if you're using a single monitor. That is annoying. But there's no inherent limitation on RTX HDR with that. It's just like NVIDIA needing to update their freaking app on that. Like, there are people who have modded this in certain games. I, I think, like, there was a Witcher 3 mod that added RTX HDR through a mod, and it did work with, uh, with multiple monitors. So RTX HDR has the ability of working with multiple monitors across every single game, and it genuinely is one of the best, if not the best, in certain ways, HDR methods out there. Like, just like the best anti-aliasing method out there is the upscaling from either FSR and especially DLSS or DLAA, RTX HDR is the best HDR method on the market. And AMD has no answer for this at the moment. That is pretty substantial. Extremely so. Like, I can't really explain it to people who haven't gamed on an HDR mon monitor or HDR display, but let me just say the difference between using HDR and not using HDR, especially if you have a good display, it's like sometimes you just feel like you're watching a freaking movie. Or you can watch movies with this, and it will, be, and it will feel sometimes, oh, am I in a cinema? That's kind of how it feels, like, especially if you have a decent enough display, considering GPU prices, believe it or not, you can actually get a really good HDR display for gaming. So you may want to buy a TV, yeah, for gaming on PC. <laughs> That's what I did, because you realize there the, some of the best displays are actually 
TVs these days, now monitors, in terms of response times, image quality, and all that. But as for gaming, let's talk about overall usage, however, because yes, you can use it beyond just games. In the NVIDIA control panel, you have the crown jewel, as I see it, and that is video image settings that support two crucial things. RTX video enhancement, super resolution, different levels of quality, and RTX HDR for video. So you can make using your GPU, which is a really powerful graphical tool, right? You can use your GPU to get any video running in HDR. You can also use your GPU power, all that significant gaming power, to get videos at a higher resolution. Now, obviously, native resolutions would be better, but let's say you're watching a lot of you know, 720p videos that are out there on YouTube or just in general streaming lower quality videos, or let's say a video was done in a lower resolution, this is great. And HDR, again, RTX HDR is really, really good. You put that on any video, on any film, it works. There are some limitations with certain con or certain pieces of content and uh, Netflix and others absolutely don't like this because one of the things that they do is they charge you extra if you want a certain level of quality. But this is freaking fantastic. It is very taxing on your C uh, GPU, keep that in mind. So if you're looking to, oh, I'm just going to game with this. It's not, it's saying inactive right now because in order for it to be activated, it's not going to be active all the time. It's only active when you're actually watching a video in full screen. That's the only time this becomes active, so just keep that in mind. But it is uh, certainly going to cost a lot in terms of performance, so you wouldn't want to game while watching a video like this. But when you are want, when you do want to watch a video in high quality, and you want to focus on that, this is a real game changer. This is where NVIDIA wins. Like, RTX HDR already in every game that's out there, pretty much, with the widest compatibility range that I've seen for any kind of technology like this. Seriously. Like, we can think of, like, reshades and filters and all that. There's tons of games which have problems with this. Every single game works with RTX HDR. That already is a game changer. But this, for video, that's just a crown jewel. And this is why NVIDIA stands atop in terms of the GPU race between itself and AMD and also Intel. Don't discount that. Don't discount the blue guys because they might come in and kick your ass eventually. We'll see how Intel does in the future. But these are the feature sets. You can talk about price. Might be possible to get a cheaper AMD GPU that technically has better performance than rasterized. Does have better performance with upscaling but at the loss of image quality. Does have fluid... Uh, fluid frames, so frame generation for every games, but in terms of image quality between HDR, the bare quality of uh, DLAA, DLSS, and RTX video, yeah, that there's no competition as far as I see it. AMD needs to respond to this, I feel. Whether or not they will remains to be seen. I think it's interesting to consider the different perspectives on this from either AMD and NVIDIA. Why is AMD focused on FSR performance? Consoles, like that's probably the reason, right? They want to get as much performance from consoles with as low, as low latency as possible. NVIDIA's focus is on the NVIDIA Shield. That's the reason for all of this, the videos, the HDR, all that. That is their focus. So it is interesting to see the different priorities for both AMD and NVIDIA and what's driving those development priorities for both of them. Christine signing out, stay tuned for more.